You're watching 16 by 9 on Global. Coming up on our broadcast, Ottawa tries to clean up a medical marijuana mess. But doctors and some users are crying foul. That's next. Last year, we brought you a story about Canada's deeply flawed medical marijuana program, a program used by 26,000 Canadians. A 16 by 9 investigation found reports of abuse, including doctors who demanded money from patients to get a license and patients who were selling the drug on the black market. Today, one doctor from our report is facing criminal charges and Health Canada is overhauling the entire program. But as Jennifer Tryon tells us, those changes seem to fall well short of what doctors and some users want. Smoking a joint used to be Marie Cole's go-to remedy. The only way, she said, she could get relief from the chronic pain of multiple sclerosis. Now, she says, if she can't do it legally, and she's not doing it at all. If I could get the license, there would be less of a worry of me getting charged. And honestly, the stress of that brings on pain. So I just, I can't have much stress in my life at all. Under Canada's new medical marijuana program, Marie will no longer need a Health Canada license to buy marijuana. But she still has to find a doctor to prescribe it and that's where she runs into problems. I have two neurologists and both of them are like anti marijuana. They're just not cool with it. So she's no better off than she was last year when she couldn't find anyone to sign her license application without paying a lot of money. You're just done with having to buy on the street. Yeah, that's pretty much the thing. I don't want to get in trouble for it. Without a license, she was forced to buy marijuana on the streets, risking safety and possible arrest every time she wanted to feel better. I'm getting older and honestly, I don't want to go to jail for it. I don't want to have a criminal record. Like, that can ruin my life. When we first met Marie Cole last year, marijuana was making her life bearable and she had great hope of getting a legal medical marijuana license. You haven't been able to find a doctor yet, have you? Yeah, exactly. I have never found a doctor that, that would be willing to do anything like that without payment. Because you've been there, you've yeah, done that. Yeah, that's, that's not right. Every doctor Marie visited last year refused to help her get a legal license. We discovered that's a common complaint in Canada. In fact, the more she tried to go the legitimate route, the more she found she was being rejected, even discriminated against by her doctors. I was just disgusted with the whole process and how Health Canada is dealing with it. Until finally, last year, she says she heard of a physician who supported the use of cannabis as medication. When I was told about this doctor, I was so excited. I was so happy. I'm like, OK, finally, I'm not going to have to worry about having to get arrested, maybe. But soon that joy turned to shock and disappointment. I walked in and I looked at the roster and it says something about a lawyer's office. So the guy took me into the room. I went to pull out the chair to sit down. And as I was sitting down, he said, OK, I need the $1,000. And I didn't even sit down. I stopped. I was like, what? $1,000? What are you talking about? He's like, it's $1,000 to fill out the paperwork. And I'm like, $1,000 for what? What are you doing? Seriously, I can fill out the paperwork myself. And he's like, I'm sorry, I can't waive the fee. You still have to pay that $1,000. I felt like I was a part of a scam or something, honestly. The man she was talking to worked for lawyer Ron Marzell, who, in an interview with 16 by 9, admitted to charging a fee for filling out medical marijuana paperwork. Listen, I will help people who want to be helped. There's a market for it. I didn't create the medical marijuana program. I did not create it. I wish it wasn't operating this way. So but you know, it's a little deceptive, though, for someone to be calling a doctor's office and to be given an address and they show up here. Okay. 
Um, you don't see that? I, again, I don't know where the confusion was uh, in, with this particular patient. So 16 by 9 had another patient call to set up an appointment with the doctor. There is a fee of $1,000 plus HST. The process was confirmed. The address she was given was none other than lawyer Ron Marzell's office. The next stop, here. This time, it is a doctor's office. The address for Dr. Ira Price. 16 by 9's cameras capture patient after patient going in. We even saw the lawyer, Ron Marzell, dropping off more patients. Every signature coming with a price tag. We wanted Dr. Price to explain whether he too was profiting from medical marijuana. I just need to ask you a couple questions for the show. Okay. My goal is to be as compassionate and empathetic to these patients as I possibly can because cannabis is definitely helpful to a lot of people. And from my perspective, I'm doing the best I possibly can to help these patients. Is that Maybe the only thing you're here to do is sign these forms? No, I do full assessments on patients, absolutely. Last year, our producer, posing as a patient, had one of Dr. Price's so-called full assessments. We timed it. It lasted just six minutes, 15 seconds. Um, take that up to the front, you're done. Really? Yeah. That's it? That's it. He got the signature he needed to help him smoke and possess pot legally in Canada. I am the physician that comes to the clinic. I do the medical aspect of things. I don't have any financial um, motivation in the clinic whatsoever. I'm assuming it's a free market. If they want to charge a certain amount and a patient is willing to pay for it or a client, it doesn't have to do with me. Dr. Price works as an emergency room physician in Hamilton, Ontario. He no longer uses this location to sign marijuana licenses, but he is still signing them on the side. When 16 by 9 called his office a few weeks ago, we were told patients must have a doctor's referral, proving medical need, and he'll sign the forms for $250. Right now, who's benefiting? The lawyers and the doctors, absolutely. The lawyers and the doctors are benefiting, okay? And again, is there, is there anything wrong with a doctor wanting to make money. On the back of some of the most vulnerable patients. Absolutely, and it shouldn't have to be that way. We need a better program. So last year, we took our findings to Colin Carey, Parliamentary Secretary to Canada's Health Minister. He said he was surprised. Well, some of the ones that you brought to my attention today, um, I was certainly not aware of, but I think it's disgusting. Are you surprised I, to hear those abuses? I am, actually. What you're telling me, um, I'm totally unaware of. We need to make a, a change. So what Health Canada is going to be doing, we're going to be phase, phasing in a new program. We're trying to make it more, if it's going to be prescribed as a drug, to treat it more like a drug. Now the government is scrapping its involvement in the license process and instead will have doctors prescribe pot directly like every other prescription drug. Trouble is, those promised reforms don't sit well with Canada's doctors. They're worried about the effect on their patients. We're very concerned about prescribing a product that actually may potentially harm them. Next, Health Canada, off pot for good making uh, the physician the sole gatekeeper and we don't know what we're prescribing. Providing Canadian patients with access to medical marijuana has been legal in Canada for over a decade, but many complain it's all smoke and mirrors. 16 by 9 discovered a long list of systematic abuses, doctors charging patients hundreds of dollars for access to the program, doctors even operating out of hotel rooms, charging patient after patient for their signature. And the appointed uh, time and place was at uh, the visitor's inn. 
along with the uh, medical files and myself and, uh, and all the relevant paperwork, uh, we were also to bring a fee of $250 in cash. Ten minutes later, Chris Lawson, who suffers from arthritis, had the signed document he needed to get a license for marijuana from Health Canada. Lawson said he wasn't the only person to show up. I would estimate about uh, 20 people or so were in the line. It was a kind of a processing mill in a way. One of the doctors 16 by 9 found running these roving clinics is described by many as a hero because he helps people get access to a license when most other doctors refuse. We tracked him down on a country road near his home, not far from Coe Hill, Ontario. How many applications have you signed off on? But sources told 16 by 9, Cameraman signed off on nearly 5,000 medical marijuana applications last year alone. That's nearly a third of the total number of license holders in Canada. Do the math at 250, no, no, that's 1.2 million. Not, you know, that is, it, this is not to be an interview about, you know, how much money I make. I, I work a lot, but... Are you billing OHIP for those appointments? No, and whatever it is I charge, it's totally within the auspices of the college. I mean, it's, there's nothing illegal, nothing immoral about it. It's not illegal or even uncommon for doctors to request a nominal fee for things like filling out insurance forms or absentee notices. Fees for paperwork aren't normally a big part of a doctor's income, but for Dr. Cameraman's, it was. We're hearing upwards yeah, of 5,000. I, I mean, is that about right? That's not true. But th about 3,000, you think? I, I would. That's a guess lot of at patients. That. You know, I would guess at about 3,000. I would That's guess a lot. at that. Dr. Cameraman's admitted to signing around 3,000 applications. That could add up to three quarters of a million dollars in fees. A tidy sum. Since our conversation with Dr. Cameraman's last year, he's been arrested and charged in five provinces for defrauding the Ontario Health Insurance Program, forgery, profiting from the proceeds of crime, and money laundering. And 11 months after our meeting, he was summoned before the Ontario College of Physicians and Surgeons to answer allegations of professional misconduct. There are also charges related to the endorsement of medical marijuana forms and falsifying records. Still, many patients considered Dr. Cameraman's and his roving clinics their only option. I feel like I've been taken advantage of by Health Canada. I feel like I've been taken advantage of by a black market that is not my fault, but yet that's where I have to get my medicine. So the doctors are basically making money off of a broken system. After 16 by 9 exposed these practices, the government promised a system overhaul. And in January, the federal health minister, Leona Agluka, launched a new program. A new approach that will balance the needs of program participants with public health, security and safety concerns. But the Canadian Medical Association doesn't like the new plans. CMA President Dr. Anna Reid says doctors have been asking for more information about marijuana and how best to prescribe it, and their concerns have been ignored. Well, what the changes uh, now um, are doing is making uh, the physician the sole gatekeeper to the uh, system. And actually, Health Canada has completely stepped away from the whole process. So now a patient would come and visit their physician, and the physician would be asked to write a prescription like any other drug for medical marijuana. But a majority of doctors surveyed last year said they'd seldom or never prescribe marijuana because they don't know enough about its effects. We don't have any of that information there. So five grams of uh, one strain of marijuana is very different from five uh, grams of another strain. And we don't know what we're prescribing. So it's uh, untenable for us to be put in the position of basically writing something out that we have no idea what it is. So where does that leave Canadian patients? For Marie Cole, right back where she started. No doctor, no license. For now, if she can't use marijuana legally, she says she's not going to use it at all. Instead, she's found her own Band-Aid solution. It's taken nearly a year to get this new pain-relieving ritual right. The timing, the temperature, the scalding heat from the hot shower, up to 10 times a day. It means now she rarely leaves home 
housebound by a system that doesn't serve her needs or those of other Canadians who depend on marijuana to make life livable. So the price of not having a criminal record, you have to accept all of this pain. Yeah, that's pretty much the trade-off. And that is our broadcast for tonight. For a behind-the-scenes look at this evening's top story, Stolen Faces, log on to our website, global16by9.com, for a candid conversation with the story's producer. Until next Friday, I'm Carolyn Jarvis. From all of us here at 16 by 9, thanks for watching.